In this lesson, we're going to learn all about speed. So let's go ahead and import some medias into our timeline, and then we can see how we can use the options available to manipulate the speed of our videos. I'm gonna go to my stock media, and what you're looking for when it comes to changing the speed of your videos is that you wanna make sure the video has a high FPS. We have talked about FPS, it's the frames per second, that's what it stands for, and it basically shows you the amount of frames or still images in a single second of that video. In this lesson, we're going to especially see how important the FPS of your videos are, because when it comes to changing the speed of your footage, uh, FPS plays a big part. So I'm going to look for something that's moving. So let's type in cars. I'm in Pixabay right here in video. I'm just going to look around and find some videos that I can use. So I found three videos that I chose to use for this lesson. One is this one. You can see the ID if you want to get the same footage. I went ahead and liked these by pressing the heart in the corner. Now I'm unliking, liking it. I have chosen these three videos. Let's go ahead and import them into our footage. Let's go ahead and drag these in just so I have them in my, the My Media tab. Delete them because I want to show you guys the frame rates first. Go to Project Media. Now that you have imported them in here, they're going to show up here as well. So the first one, let's right click and view the FPS. So the frame rate is quite high. You can see 50 frames per second and the resolution is high as well. This video will be perfect for speed ramping and slowing down. Let me just rename this to 50 FPS. The second video, right click. This one has 23 FPS and the resolution is HD. This will not be a good thing to slow down and we'll see in a few minutes why. Let me just right click, 23 FPS, and then we have our final video. This one is also 50 FPS. Just rename it to something else, 50 FPS too, because there's one already. And now let's take a look at changing the uniform speed of something. I'm gonna drag this video in, and I'm just gonna match it to media. And there we go. So we have this video, let me play this back, of this car slowly making its way here, doing a donut and it's going to move out. It's going to do it a bunch of times actually. So what I'm going to do is to first make this video faster. You can either double click on your footage and then go to speed or you can just go over here and it's going to open a window, uniform speed, speed ramping, slow, fast, normal, freeze frame and reverse. We're going to take a look at each one. So over here you can access some presets or predetermined numbers that you can just choose from. But once you double click, you're going to get uh, something different. So you get to work with the slider and you can just go either way. Both ways can uh, affect the speed of your video. So let's take a look at the uniform speed. Uniform speed means that the speed that you're going to determine is going to be the same throughout the whole video. Right now it's at one. One is a normal speed of your video. Anything below one is slow and anything above one is fast. Let's see what happens when I bring this all the way to the left. You can see how long our video is. If I zoom out, you can see that it's 30 seconds long, even though our original video, let's bring our original video here. The original video is really tiny. You can see that we can barely see it actually. So I brought it all the way to the left, putting it to zero, and that's really slow. Let's play this and you can barely see any movement because of how slow it is. You can see here that the we're still playing the video, it's not paused, but because it's really slow, it's like we're getting glitch effect almost. All right, let's double click and go back and then bring it this time to the right all the way. And now we can barely see the video. I'm gonna bring my play hit at the start, zoom into my timeline. Compared to the original video, you can see how thin that is. If I play this, we weren't even able to see the video because it was really fast. Let's turn off the visibility of the second uh, video track. Go back here. If I play it, there we go. It's just glitched across my screen and that was really fast. Double click on my video again. And so you just want to work around and see which number works best for you. The video originally was a bit slow. So if I want to speed it up a bit, I should just go a little above one. Comparing to the original video, you can see how fast 
the uh, video has become. Kind of bring it to the left. I don't want it to be that fast. Let's type in two. Let's play this back. The second uh, or the original video is turned off. And now it's a lot faster compared to what we had before. What happens when I go to the other way? Instead of one, let's go for 0.70 actually. And you can see we've increased the duration by this much. If you remembered, I did mention that if you want to add to your video, your video's duration, you either need to add more footage or slow it down. Slowing it down does add to the duration. You can see the original video was 18 seconds long and now the new video is 26 seconds long. Let's play this back. And now it's really slow, taking its time as it's doing the donut. So that's what uniform speed is. Below you can also see how this affects the duration of your video. And the video that I uh, just altered is now 27 seconds long. If I speed it up, I can see that it's less than a second long. If I make it slow, one minute long, super fast, it's barely even there. So you can just work around the slider and see how this affects your video. Let's hit reset to go back to the original settings. Below we have something called reverse speed, which is basically uh, your video in reverse. Let's turn that on and see this car doing a donut in reverse. I'm going to bring down the resolution here just so nothing lags. Let's play this back. Now you can see the car is moving backwards because we turned on reverse speed. Now I can combine reverse speed with the uniform speed up here so I can make it reverse and fast. Like that. Let's play this back and see what happens. So it's in reverse but it's just glitching across. One reason why it's glitching is also because our video has not been rendered. The effect that we just added needs to be rendered. You can see up here it's red. That means that the video has not been rendered. So let's go ahead and hit this button. It's going to render for a smooth playback, which is exactly what we need. You can see the line here is turning green. Let's see it with the render. And now it's moving without glitching. So the car is moving backwards and it's super fast. The same thing applies for slowing it down. Let me render this again. When you're working with speed, you want to make sure that you are rendering your videos or else you're going to get a glitch effect, which is not that fun to look at. Let's go ahead and take a look. The video is in reverse, but it's also slowed down. And we're able to do that by reversing the clip and slowing it down. Let's go back. And then we have something called ripple edit. Now, basically what this means is that if I have two videos, let me just Command C or Control C on this and then paste it here. I'm just going to bring this right next to this, leaving no space in between. Now I'm going to go on the first video, double click, turn off Ripple Edit, and let's say I'm going to increase the video. So you can see there is a space in between these two videos, but because I turned off Ripple Edit, Filmora didn't automatically drag this video and place it right here. So let's do that again, but this time with Ripple Edit. Double click on the first video, turn this on, and we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to add this much, and you can see how Filmora drags the second video and keeps it right next to the first one so that there's no space in between. So that's why you have the Ripple uh, Edit option. We also have something called the Maintain Audio Pitch. This is for the audio that your video has. This option is grayed out because this video has no audio going to see that later. Now let's attempt to speed ramp. I'm going to delete this video right here and choose my other video, which was the second 50 frames per second video. And we just have this car coming in towards us. So let's double click and this time move to the speed ramping option. This is what it looks like. With uniform speed, like we said, everything is consistent throughout, meaning that if I speed things up by two times, it's going to stay like that from the beginning to end. But with speed ramping, you can actually animate some parts to be fast and some parts to be slow. All right, so now with this framing, we can tell the difference between the new one and the original video. I'm going to lock the original video so that we don't do anything to it. You can see it's locked. Going to the new video, let's double click and go to speed, speed ramping. 
So I'm going to first just click one of these presets. Let's hit Montage. And I'm going to get this map over here. And I'm going to explain what that means in a second. But you can see that we have sped up the video just by a touch. And comparing it to the original, we have lost this chunk. Let's play this back. I'm going to render it first. All right, let's play this. I'm sure you saw the difference at some point in this video got fast and then it slowed down. So why is this happening? It's because we have keyframes at different speeds. So just imagine a roller coaster. If you look at the uh, structure at some point, you're going to slowly come up and then drop down before making your way to the end. So imagine that you're constructing a roller coaster for this video. So if you look over here, we have the numbers. And if you remembered, Adding to one is going to speed up your clip. Removing from one is going to slow it down. So the first keyframe is at one. So is the second one. So that means until here, the video is normal. Over here, the video goes up to around six, somewhere over here. So that means it's fast over here. Then it drops down in a fast rate to around 0.6 or 0.7. So it slows down here. And then the next one is at one, so it means that it's normal. So basically using these, I can manipulate the times. You can see on my cursor, I can see the times. I can speed something up and then allow it to change speed at another time. So you can just play around with these. And remember when you have curves, you are making this transition smooth. If you want to create a point, you would have to hit this plus button. And now I have another point that I can use to change things up. So right here, you can see we don't have a curve and we have this rather straight line jumping down. And what that means is that it's going to suddenly slow down. So let's play this back. You can see, it was just like really fast. I play that again. Really fast and it just slows down, but in a really in a really strict way because we removed from the curves and therefore we're getting we're getting a stiff result. So I'm going to hit none on this. I can also choose other things like bullet time. Let's take a look at what this is. Play this back and just look at the difference between these two. There we go. So speed ramping is a great way to make your videos look more professional. You can just choose one of these, but let's create our own. So we have a straight line and basically you would use speed ramping to showcase the cool parts of your video. Right here where there's nothing, I don't want to uh, slow it down because I want to see the car, which comes around somewhere here. I'm going to create a point here and just make this go down like that. Maybe I want to uh, speed things up here because we're not really seeing anything. So just do that and let's see how that looks. Render it first. Play this back. There we go. So I got a slow effect. You can play around with these. It's a really cool thing. Another thing, a uh, feature that Filmora has, let me just double click and hit reset so I can get back the original speed of my video, is that you can freeze your frames. So let's say I want the footage to stop here. I just want to look at this car. I can do that by selecting my clip and then going up here onto freeze frame. And now from this point on, it's going to freeze. You can see it's called freeze. All right, let's play this back. Over here, my video is going to freeze just like we determined. You can see it just stops moving. And then after this, it's going to continue moving. I can alternate the times by go selecting that freeze bar and then going on the edge to either slow down my freeze time or increase it. And then it will continue after the freeze the freeze frame, which is right here. So I went ahead and changed my frame. Here we have the 60 FPS video and here we have 23. I'm going to slow down both videos by the same rate and then we're going to see the difference in FPS. Let's play them back. You can see how this guy still moving. There is a really tiny bit of glitching, but the 23 FPS one is just, it's almost as if we have a slideshow with different pictures. That is why you want to make sure you have a high FPS when you're slowing things down. Now this isn't that noticeable when you speed things up. So let's speed it up this time, go for two times. So as you can see with the sped up version, it's not that noticeable and we're not really getting any glitches. But when it comes to slowing down your clip, you want to make sure you have a high FPS so you don't get a glitching effect. 
And all right, we learned all about speed in this lesson. We learned how to speed things up, slow them down, freeze a frame, put them in reverse, use uniform speed, and finally speed ramping. Now let's move on to the next lesson.